Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. We welcome you to San Jose Catholic Church for the celebration of the Mass on this fourth Sunday of Advent. If you are joining us online, please make sure to like and subscribe to our channels on YouTube and Facebook. When you do that, we send you automatic notifications every time we are online. As we open up this weekend with the fourth Sunday of Advent, the fourth candle on the Advent wreath is being lit. This is a reminder that we have been preparing ourselves for four weeks now for the great celebration of the Nativity of Christ our Redeemer. Please make sure that you celebrate this fourth Sunday of Advent because it will be a very, very short week ending Sunday at 3.59 p.m. At four o'clock, we will start celebrating Christmas and Christmas and the fourth Sunday of Advent are two different things that required a very different celebration. We hope that you can also join us for the celebration of Christmas, starting with Masses at 5 and 8 o'clock on Sunday and at 10 o'clock on Monday. At this time, I'm going to invite all of you to please stand and greet everyone around you with the love of Christ. Now let us sing to the Lord with joy.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and the sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and the cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, go, do whatever you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be the commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people in Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old. Since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure, endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For heaven I will sing the goodness of the Lord. For heaven I will sing the goodness of the Lord. promises of the Lord I will sing for heaven. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said my kindness is established for heaven. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. For heaven I will sing I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. 
forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. For ever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. For heaven I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the, proclama and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested th through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the external God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ be glory forever and ever. Amen. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But Mary was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to Mary, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. 
Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the hand made of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we're collecting ticket number 126 for our students in religious education. View came a little bit after mass started. Today is ticket number 126. Anyone? 126? Okay, we have one here. Anyone else? Okay, that's great. Let's give our red students a big hand. They are doing make big, big efforts, making big efforts. Thank you very much. That's great. We welcome you once again to this Holy Mass, and we welcome about 65 or so families that celebrate this Mass with us online, and we look forward to the day when you can join us online. If I were to ask a kid if there is something that is impossible for God, most likely a child in religious education would say, no. And if I would ask a teenager, is there anything that is impossible for God, the answer would be, no, right? And if I ask an adult and a retired person and a person that is either able to speak or about to die, is there anything that is impossible for God? The answer would be no. There is nothing impossible for God, right? And yet we find on the way of, hopefully on the way to heaven, we ourselves find a lot of instances where we declare God to be um, lacking of something or to just not do what he is about to do. Sometimes we even dare to tell God what we want him to say, right? It's not that God has impossibilities in God's life, but we make things impossible basically for God. And we want to transpire to let our impossibilities, what we think it's not possible, to let God do it for us. In the gospel that we hear today, as well as the rest of the readings, we hear that there is something that is very possible for God, and that is to say yes to life, to say yes to everything, to say yes to salvation, to say yes to new creation and redemption. Those are the things that God is saying yes to when the angel goes and taps Mary on the shoulder and says, hey Mary, uh, what, what do you think about this? This is what God wants to do. And they enter into a conversation, and at the end, she said, well, may it be done unto me according to your word. According to the word that the angel gave her, which is the word that God sent, because nothing is actually impossible for God. During these uh, past few weeks, now four weeks, according to the Advent Read, we have uh, done our preparation by way of praying prayers, saying prayers or praying novenas or uh, doing the posadas or going to confession, uh, doing penitential rites. And for all of us, we have done all of what I have just said, right? And many of you took different opportunities to come to these events that would prepare us for what we are about to celebrate. Of all the candles that you see, the one missing its beam is still the white candle, which represents Christ, right? This white candle is about to be lit today, starting at 4 o'clock tonight when Christmas begins. 
we are going to enjoy not only the light that comes from the candle, but also the reality that God has said the yes to all these things. God has said the yes to life. God has said the yes to redemption, to new creation. God has said the yes to loveliness, even we, when we are not worthy of his love. Because nothing is impossible for God. It is very important that we, in the last uh, final hours to before Christmas begins at 4 o'clock today, that we ask ourselves if we have declared God to be, to not do something, if we have asked God to not do something, if we have asked for blessings but we want blessings for no one else, if we want freedom but we don't want freedom from another person, if we want a forgiveness and mercy but we don't want it for someone else, I just want it for myself. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we ask blessings for me, 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 and myself. But we don't want others to have the same blessings, to enjoy the same freedom, to enjoy the same kind of redemption that we have been acquired in Christ. It is very important in our very last, our very final hours of Advent before Christmas begins to ask if we have ever, ever even thought that something is impossible for God. Because the angel today declares that there is actually nothing, nothing at all that is impossible for God. And we are to accept this, because when we accept it, then we declare freedom and redemption and new creation for ourselves and for everyone around us. If we declare it just for ourselves, that's not what the angel did. Because the angel didn't come and deliver a message to Mary so that she would be blessed, but so that all would be blessed. In fact, not only all of us Catholics or all of us Christians or all of us religious people, but the entire humanity has been impacted by the birth of Christ. Do we believe this? Church, do we believe this? Because sometimes we, and I'm not talking about you, but sometimes we believe, we live out our lives as if we believe that the only ones blessed are the Catholics or the Christians or the religious. But that's not what the angel says. The angel delivered a message so that all, the entire humanity, everybody that existed before us and everyone that will come to this world after us, everyone that has ever lived and will live in this planet and everywhere in the universe has been impacted by the birth dying and resurrection of Christ. It is for the entire humanity, not only for a few. So when God says yes to life, to new creation, to freedom, to redemption, he is not only talking about us, just a few of us. He is talking about everyone as in the entire humanity, the entire human race. As we walk towards Christmas in a, this last few hours of Advent, let us ask ourselves if we truly and sincerely believe this, that this blessing is not only for us, it's for all.
before we recite our creed, as we do every week, uh, we are going to, uh, uh, we have a blessing that has been prepared for our, for newborn babies. Is there any newborn baby here? Come on, ladies. Married ladies, married ladies. No? Oh, my. Well, we're going to have to wait until next year then. You couples have about 12 months to get ready for this blessing, okay? Okay. Yeah, this is a blessing for newborn babies, these babies who have not been baptized. No? Well, I'm glad that everyone here is baptized, but maybe we can have some volunteers for next year. Why not? Why not? It would be lovely. Okay, well, let us continue. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us offer our prayers and intentions to the Lord. Let us pray for the church that we may echo Mary's word. May it be done to me according to your word whenever we hear the Lord's voice call to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Let us pray for world leaders that they may imitate the concern that King David showed for the ark of God in respecting God's presence in their lands and in their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, a prayer. Let us pray for the safety of all who are traveling and for our donors, minist ministries, families, children, the elderly, and the unemployed, that the Lord will see to their every need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Birthday blessings for Lupe Moreno, for the health of Jose Saldana and family, for the repose of the soul of Manuel Diaz, Antonia Lemán, Francisca Sandoval, Guadalupe Luna. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for our intentions and the intentions of about 65 families that pray with us this Mass, that God may uh, uh, show us how there's actually nothing impossible for Him. Let us pray to the Lord. We also pray for your children, for our young people, and everyone that is under 45 years of age, asking God to grant us vocations and to one day soon show your child a vocation, not only to serve uh, society, but to serve God's church. Let us pray for vocations. Jesus, our Savior, your sacred heart felt compassion when you looked upon the crowd and the soul that they were like sheep without a shepherd. We know that the harvest of souls is abundant, but the laborers few. So we ask you, the master of the harvest, to send out more laborers. Open my heart and the hearts of my brothers and the sisters to your will, and raise up abundant, faithful servants of the gospel, devoted and holy priests, sisters, and the brothers, who will spend themselves for your people in the Diocese of Austin. May none of your flock, one at the price of your blood, be without a shepherd to guide them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to take a moment now to prepare our offerings before we walk to the altar. Father Almighty, as we are reminded by the angel today that there is nothing impossible for you, uh, we walk down the altar, uh, to the altar, and uh, we offer our 
prayers and our offerings today. Please receive them through Christ our Lord. My soul. Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you give us, especially for the blessing of mercy, for the blessing of love, for the blessing of forgiveness that take flesh in uh, the blessing of family. We ask that you please receive these offerings from your holy church and bless them through Christ our Lord. may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar by your holy church, just as the Holy Spirit filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and every word to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and the Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming, and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by the very gift of Jesus that we already rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so in the company of the angels and with all the saints, we proclaim your glory as with one voice we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took breath and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ascended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death, O Lord And profess your resurrection Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, with Joe our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and the sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on our soul, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord to be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to eternal life. If you cannot receive Holy Communion today, please say this prayer with me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
bless you on the way and bless our brothers and sisters who are sick and homebound. May the bless of God take you to this rain tribe safely. And may God's peace be with you through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. At the start of the month of December, I ask you for a special gift for the church. I don't need gifts, thank you very much. I love you, but I don't need gifts. But the parish will benefit from your gifts. If you have not given a, an end of year gift to the parish and you would like to do so, it's not mandatory, it's just a gift to the parish, right? I thank you very much for the extra effort. Thank you very much. We also would like to welcome those of you who may not be from San Jose. If you are just visiting, we would like to please stand so that we may give you a warm welcome. Yeah, let's, let's see if they stand. That's great. Well, you're all welcome. That's great. Come back and see us. Come back and see us. That's great. Uh, just a friendly, friendly reminder that, as I said before, the uh, Christmas season begins at 4 o'clock today. And so there are some masses scheduled starting today at 5 and 8 o'clock and then tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Um, some people at the end of the previous mass said, why am I coming to a second mass today? And I said, you better don't complain because I'm doing seven masses. You're doing only two, right? I'm doing seven masses and I'm not complaining. It's just I love it, right? But, um, but you're just saying two, I mean, attending to not seven. So get over with it, and we'll see you this evening, right? Okay, so there is a Spanish a conference for women, for Catholic women. If you are bilingual in Spanish or you speak Spanish, you're more than welcome to attend this conference. The conference is, uh, the way that they have it is that from here through, I think, the beginning of January, if you buy one ticket, you get one free to invite your girlfriend. Why not, you know? It will be a nice thing. Uh, I have uh, nothing to say, but thank you, thank you, thank you to the team that, uh, and everybody that attended the Posadas uh, 2023. It's now history. Uh, we want to thank especially the different teams that uh, uh, helped us celebrate the liturgy. Um, like liturgy, thank you. And because uh, there is a lot of people that helped in these events, some of these masses were bilingual and there was a lot more to do, right? This year, uh, we decided to not do the rosary prior to the posada, but to say the mass. And it was, my experience was that it was just a lovely thing. To the ministries that fed us, thank you, thank you so very much. You have to know that the parish doesn't spend one penny in the posada. It is always the ministries who come up with 
uh, the money, the resources to, to have these celebrations eight days prior to Christmas. And so they are very, very generous. And we have such great donors here. Uh, everybody wants posadas to happen, and they do happen because of you. So thank you so very much. All these things and efforts were coordinated by the parish council. So thank you so very much, the parish council. You see them all giggly and happy there. And um, they are just a great team. I think we're missing one person there, aren't we? I think we're missing one person or two. Richard is there. I think we're missing one person. Who? Maria, yes. Okay, well, thank you very much. And uh, kudos to uh, Drespeto, who came up with wonderful reflections. Each of the nights that we had a posada, they came up with the most wonderful reflections. If you uh, tuned in, you know what I'm talking about. If you did not, for whatever reason, they are still in YouTube. on YouTube. You may find them there at the end of every Mass, starting last Saturday to through, through yesterday. It was just a wonderful uh, way to um, come together and celebrate uh, that we are expecting a baby to be born in our lives. In a special, very special way, we want to say thank you to the music ministry, who are not only at each of the posadas, but each of the masses, and some of them are still here today. Let's give them all a big hand to all people who helped us do the posadas this year. That's great. And last but never least, we want to uh, um, uh, bless religious items. If you have some groceries or candles that you would like to have blessed, please make sure that you stand with these things in your hands. You. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be your name, O Lord. You are the fount and the source of every blessing. And you look with delight upon the devout practices of your children. Draw near, we pray on these, your servants, and as they use these symbols of their faith and devotion, Grant that they may also strive to be transformed into the likeness of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Every year we have this calendar. We, we don't buy these calendars. We get, get them as gifts, right? And so we want to give each family one. So I know that some people are like me. You don't use paper anymore. All that you have is your gadgets, which is great, right? That's what I do. Except that most of your gadgets will not have the saint of the day and the different seasons of the year, like the liturgical calendar. So get one, please. It's one per family, not individual, but one per family. Especially if you have children in the religious education program or you're a catechist, you really want to have one of these because that's where the different colors and the different saints and seasons are contained. So thank you very much. Uh, the ushers will be distributing these calendars <clears throat> as we exit. Well, we'll see you tonight or tomorrow. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Subduum presidium confugimus, Sancta Dei Genitrix, Nostras deprecaciones, Ne despicias in ne chasitatibus, Sed a pericolis conctis, libera nos emper, virgo benedicta. And may the souls of our faithfully departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Those of you visiting us today, uh, don't get too excited. Normally, Mass ends at 11.45, 11.45.
but I have to really shorten it a little bit because I have seven masses. And I say it with all sincerity, I love the mass, but it's seven of them. And also so that you come back for more, okay? You come back for more tonight. God bless you. sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. 